And when you ask senior executives, as in not necessarily HR, but also heads of business units, presidents, COOs, CAOs, what they say is that talent management, as opposed to transcendental meditation, is, is really essential for an organization. The problem is if you ask these same broad-based group of people how well it's being done in their organization, it's a much lower percentage. So the question, the riddle that we want to kind of work through is what's missing? What is the disconnect between one and the other? If I was going to provide an executive summary up front, you know, a trick that you may use to get somebody to really read a document, because everybody wants to say, oh, I'm an executive, I'll read this portion, it goes like this. Talent drives business outcomes or uh, key outcomes that you want in an organization. And as a result, if you put those activities together, that results in something called strategy. That's how the linkage appears to go. So let's take a little journey you know, in our, in our little uh, car, head down that road and see where it takes us. Let's talk about something that may be useful as a comparison from about 10 years ago. A lot of the work that I initially did after leaving the Army dealt with recruiting for organizations, largely financial services like many of you, trying to find IT people, CIOs, CTOs, and their direct reports. About 2003, there's an interesting guy named Carr who came out with an HBR article that said, in essence, IT doesn't matter. Then he came out with a book that said essentially the same thing. And I assure you, people went absolutely nuts. They went a little bit crazy when previously, like one or two years before, all of them had perceived themselves as key strategic players who wanted a seat at the table. They demanded. I knew a number of senior people who were IT professionals who because they did not report directly to the CEO, they went somewhere else. It was that important to them. So if you follow this through, Carr's argument was IT had become commonplace, it was standard, and thus if it's standard, it can be outsourced. If it's outsourced, then you have a smaller group of IT people who are card-carrying members of your organization. After people got angry, what happened was tremendous reduction in the budgets, in the number of people associated with IT. So the question becomes, what happens after all of this takes place? And the short answer is, you know, on the brink of obsolescence, at least in many people's mind, it's common, it's standard, somebody else can do it, you can outsource it. You know, what did these people do? You know, well, one group of them got mad. And in essence, they left corporate America and they're doing something else today. Other groups said, wait a minute, let's take this on you know, front and center and see what we can do to react to that criticism and bolster the value of what we do in an organization. So they became a, uh, fluent in the language of business. They identified those key components that were really uh, able to solve the problems associated with the businesses, to find their pain and do something about it, to talk less about IT, talk more about this thing called business outcomes. So there may be, you know, they became business uh, partners. Their metrics were not IT related, but rather they were business oriented. And so as a result, they became business partners. And as a result, you can outsource a lot of IT, but those people who are key and essential, that can move those key uh, objectives, that they can solve the pain associated with business units or COOs or CFOs, or et, et cetera, those people are alive and well and doing great in corporate America. So it's an interesting analogy. Uh, maybe it has a parallel. Maybe we'll talk about it later. The perception is cost that is controlled by uh, HR, it's done pretty well. 40% say you control costs very nicely. And part of that is from outsourcing. Part of it is you control the number of people that are engaged in your industry, in your company. And so 
you've re really gotten very, very smart about this. And that's really critical because that's part of being successful as a business. People strategy, uh, about 35% say it's, it's done well. Here, talent management, uh, that's about 25%. Proving HR's value, back to the 17% we said. And then finally, analytics, right? A topic that so many people are talking about, that's a lot lower.